In this video, we're going to be looking at types of stationary points. So being able to identify and look at the different types there are, and the first derivative test. So this is a test to determine what type of stationary point it is using the gradient of different points around a particular uh, stationary point. So firstly, what is stationary point? So if you have these graphs here, you can see that at particular points, their gradients equal zero. So here you have different gradients, like negative 10 for example, negative 3, negative 1 maybe. But here, the gradient it is equal to 0. And then at the other points, it's not equal to 0. So this particular point, m is equal to 0. And at either side, they're not. This point here, we have m is equal to 0. So effectively, a stationary point, as stationary you can see here, is when m is equal to 0 at a particular point. So here is a stationary point, there is a stationary point, and then we can look at the other types as well. So there are four different types of stationary points. So you've covered probably two of them pretty extensively in the quadratics, and so that's the quadratic like that going up, and then the quadratic like that going down. And often we refer to these instead of stationary points as turning points. And you can think about them as turning points, the same thing as stationary points. However, they are a two types of stationary points. So we begin by looking at this graph here. So this graph has a stationary point here. You can see it's a quadratic going up. However, when we have a graph going like this, we can look at the gradient. So what's the gradient on this side? Well, the gradient is going down, so it's negative. So we have a negative gradient. The gradient is equal to zero. So that shows us it's going to be a stationary point. And then the gradient becomes positive. So we're going from negative all the way down, hitting this point, and then we're going back up again. So you can think about this turning point as or well, the minimum point in the graph. So as it's a minimum point in the graph, we call this stationary point, or this type of stationary point, a local minimum. So as it's a local minimum, this graph can sometimes be referred to as a turning point, because you're going from negative to positive. So you, the gradients are changing. So you go from negative, so as it's decreasing, when it reaches this point and then it increases again, it has to be the minimum point in the graph. So what about the other type of turning point, the other type of quadratic? So that's when this point here is going to be a maximum. And so that is going to be a local maximum stationary point. So you have a stationary point inflection, so a local maximum stationary point. So how does this occur? Well, that means on the left-hand side, you have to have a positive graph. Because that means when x is getting bigger, it's getting the graph is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're going to reach this point here. However, when you go on the right-hand side, it's going to be negative. Because it's negative, you can see it's going to start to decrease. And that's why it's going to be a maximum point. And if you draw it like this, so you have the positive, and you have flat, and then negative, you'll be able to see that these have to connect, and you're going to have a local maximum. And that's basically what the first derivative test is, and we'll go through that more later. So that's the first two types. So what about when we have a graph like this? So this is when we have a point here where m is equal to 0. Then we look at the left-hand side, and it's positive, and the right-hand side, and, and it's also positive. So it can't be a maximum point, and it also can't be a minimum point, because it's, there's going to be parts of the graph that are greater than it, and also parts that are less than it. So we, what do we call this one? Well, this is a positive, positive stationary point of inflection. So as a, the reason why it's called positive, as you can see here, positive on either side, it's positive. And then there's a stationary point of inflection, because you have a stationary point here when m is equal to 0. So positive stationary point of inflection. Then the other type is when the graph looks like this. So that's when you have a similar shape where m is equal to 0, but on either side you have negative. So once again, it can't be a maximum, it can't be a minimum point, because maximum when x is very low, it's going to be a higher point. When x is very high, it's going to be a lower point. So there's not going to be a local maximum or a local minimum. So this is called a negative stationary point of inflection. It's the same name as before, but instead of positive, it's now negative. And you can see here the reason, because when it's negative, on both sides it's negative. 
you can see that graph there, it's going to go down, there, there, and it's going to have this shape. So negative stationary point of inflection. So how do we tell what type of stationary point it is? Well, let's say we have the equation here. So y is equal to negative x minus 4 squared. So you can graph it, and that's a good way to be able to tell. However, you can use this thing called the first derivative test. First, so the first thing is you go dy dx. You have to find the derivative. So when we bring this down, we get negative 2 x minus 4. So this isn't a derivative test. We just want to find if there's any turning points. And to find that, we or stationary points. To find that, we let dy dx equal 0. Therefore, we get negative 2 x minus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, when x is equal to 4, there's going to be a stationary point. But what type of stationary point is it going to be? So you set up this sort of table thing. We go the x values, then you go dy dx. So you have the point here, 4. And then what does dy dx equal? Well, 0. And then this is the last one, is like the graph. So how does it look graphically? Well, when the dy dx is equal to 0, graphically, it's a straight line. So you have 4, 0, and a straight line. Then we pick any point to the left um, for these type of equations, but it's best to pick ones that are a bit closer, and then point to the right. So what we could do here is we can go, let's say x is equal to 3. So at this point, x is equal to 3. So what does dy dx is equal to? Well, we stub x is equal to 3 into here, and we get negative 2, 3 minus 4, and that is equal to negative 2 times negative 1, which is equal to 2. 2. So that means it's going to be positive. And that, you don't have to worry, I just represent that by a positive line, positive gradient. What about if we now look at x is equal to 5? So that's the right-hand side before we looked at the left-hand side. So right-hand side 5, what does dy dx equal to? Well, it's equal to negative 2, 5 minus 4. So that's just going to give us negative 2. And this will be a negative gradient. So from this, we can see that on the left-hand side, it's going to be positive. It's going to be stationary, and then it's going to be negative. And graphically, you can see what the turning point is going to look like. When you do actually graph this equation, you are going to get something that looks like this, with a stationary point here at x equals 4. So that's like the first derivative test. We can sort of set up this table and looking at these different gradients, as well as graphically, just to make sure, you can see what type of um, set stationary point it's going to be. So it doesn't matter what type of points you pick. So before we pick 3, 4, 5. However, as long as there's only one stationary point, the reason why I say there's only one station, if there's one stationary point and the graph is negative, it will continue negative all the way down. And then if it's, um, oh, it's positive, it will continue positive for all those values. And then it's going to continue negative for all those values if there's only one point. So what we could have done here is we could have picked different values. So let's say x is equal to 4, x is equal to 5, x is equal to uh, 4, 4, yeah, 0, 4, and 5. So obviously at 4 it's going to be 0, but what about it at x is equal to 0? So x is equal to 4, dy dx is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, then dy dx is equal to 8. So once again it's going to be positive. And at 5 we had negative 2. So even though these values are different, it doesn't matter. All we care about is the sign. Is it positive or is it negative or is it 0? So that's going to look like that. And once again, even if we did the different points, we would have got the same answer. And then we would have got this equation here. that the, It's going to be a local maximum stationary point. So lastly... This is a random table that I've got, so we don't know what the equation is. Y is equal to... But from this equation, you should be able to work out what type of stationary point it is. Or not equation, from this table. So if x equals 2, x equals 5, x equals 7. So dy dx is equal to 3, 0, and 9. So graphically, this is equal to the straight. Then we have a positive. And we also have another positive line. So that means it's going to be a positive stationary point of inflection. So what's it going to look like? Well, if we graphed this equation, it's going to look something like that, and it's going to look this general shape. So that's basically the introduction to the first derivative test. It's good to do a few examples just so you can get understanding of what's sort of the best and easiest values to find for 
the x's because you don't want to sub in x values that get really complicated dy dx's such as let's say 3 root 2 on 5 because there's no point all we care about is a positive or is it negative so always look for what value for x is the easiest and be careful there are multiple dy dx's so when it equals 0 so dy dx is equal to 0 such as x is equal to negative 2 and 4 so if that's the case then you can set up a table with a value below negative 2, then a value negative 2, then a value higher than negative 2, a value of 4, then a value of higher than 4. And once again, you set up these dy dx's and you'll be able to work out what the two different points of inflections are. The main thing is that you have to make sure that your middle value is between these two values.